So what we are treating in FLD, we have to treat overweight, we have to treat insulin resistant and metabolic syndrome, and then hepatitis steatosis, and then apoptosis and inflammation that causes a fibrosis and then cirrhosis of the liver. And then there are complications for the cirrhosis and next cirrhosis, next cancer, etc. And then uh, we have to think about uh, nephaldi and associated uh, metabolic complications like cardiovascular death, cancer death, etc. So improvement or resolution of the history of hepatitis and no worsening of the fibrosis. Improvement in fibrosis, no worsening of the hepatitis is very important uh, for the uh, treatment of the nephaldi. So current view of the uh, candidates for pharmacological therapy. So actually uh, the pharmacotherapy is the, the last portion of the treatment of the nephaldi. So which uh, people needs pharmacotherapy? Actually uh, the NASH patient and the NASH uh, cirrhotic NASH fibrosis and then advanced fibrosis. These patients need some pharmacological therapy. Most of the pa uh, patients uh, need a lifestyle uh, changes and his diet, etc. <coughs> so no or mild fibrosis, F0, F1, and then there is a high risk of progression that needs some pharmacotherapy. And then next significant fibrosis, F2 needs pharmacotherapy. And next with the advanced fibrosis, F3 needs pharmacological therapy. And uh, nephaldi, NASH, and cirrhosis uh, all can change to the hepatocellular carcinoma. So we have to uh, consider about the HCC and the NASH patient, and then we have to prevent a decomposition of the cirrhosis, and we have to consider about the fibrosis reversal. It is also a little bit difficult, but if it is less than F3, it can be uh, possible because of the robust, uh, treatment and the reversal of the uh, cirrhosis. So management of the nephaldi and uh, diagnosis of the nephaldi and, and overweight, uh, visceral adiposity, sedentary lifestyle, and then we have to reduce the cardiovascular risk, uh, diabetes, hyperlipidemia, hypertension, and then regarding about the fat metabolism, uh, we have insulin synthesizer and bile acids, uh, receptor agonists, and then regarding about the anti-inflammatory medication, about the uh, fibrotic, anti-fibrotic medications. So this is a guideline of the ASLD. And when patient with unsuspected or hepatitis steatosis, direct detected on imaging. So if we detected uh, some hepatitis steatosis, uh, if they have a sign and symptoms, uh, abnormal liver biochemistry should be evaluated. I think uh, Professor Nyomi has already mentioned this portion. And unsuspected hepatitis steatosis, and, uh, the lack of any liver-related symptoms or sign in normal liver biochemistry, what we are doing, we are doing assess for the metabolic risk factors. So although the liver is okay, but we have to assess other metabolic risk factors like obesity, glucose intolerance, dyslipidemia, and we have to consider alternative cause of the hepatic steatosis. And in patients with unsuspected hepatic steatosis, only detected on imaging, who are asymptomatic and have normal liver chemistry, liver biopsy do not need to be done. So this is very important because to confirm the uh, uh, faulty, uh, some uh, thought that liver biopsy is very uh, 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 important or something like that, but the recommendation mentioned about that in an asymptomatic patient, normal liver biochemistry, we do not need to do liver biopsy. What about the diabetes and obesity? So uh, all the nephaldi patients should have screened for the diabetes and then uh, it is not advised at this time to do uncertain surrounding diagnostic tests as liver biochemistry can be with normal ranges with the nephaldi and NASH. They may not be sufficiently sensitive to or serve as a screening test and liver ultrasound is potentially more sensitive. So we have to do only uh, the liver ultrasound uh, and, uh, the, in the diabetes patient and obesity patient uh, to screen for the nephaldi. What about the family members? If you come across uh, one patient with a nephaldi, uh, systemic screening of the family members uh, uh, should not be recommended. I mean, uh, 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 the 80% of patients with NASH have a, a similar affected first degree relative, and fatty liver was present only 80% of the family members. So they mentioned that a screening of the family member is not recommended at the meantime. 
And what about the initial evaluation? Uh, essential to exclude competing ideologies for the steatosis. And the diagnosis of this requires hepatitis steatosis. No significant alcohol consumption, no competing ideology, and no consisting coexisting cause of the front liver disease. So you can diagnose it easily uh, by doing uh, simple tests and simple procedures. So initial evaluation, I think, uh, 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 in context of the uh, some uh, hemochromatosis, C2821, HIV mutation, we will run the liver biopsy. So elevated serum ferritin and transferrin saturation with suspected nephrology should lead to testing of the genetics of gen uh, hemochromatosis. Now, high serum details of autoantibody associated with the some features suggestive of autoimmune liver disease. Uh, so, uh, uh, we do not prompt for the autoimmune hepatitis in case of the nephrology because in some cases, uh, there might be some uh, uh, combined uh, presentation of the autoimmune hepatitis and nephrology. So, positive serum autoantibody tests mentioned about that ANE more than 1.160 and ASMA uh, more than 1.40 were present, 21% of the patients. So, uh, we do not think about uh, the presence of the autoimmune hepatitis in patients with the, uh, nephrology. Uh, regarding about the lifestyle intervention, lifestyle is very important for the management of the nephrology. So, we have to reduce the weight and that reduces the hepatitis steatosis. Hypocalorie diet alone or in conjunction with physical activity. So we have to combine with uh, activity, exercise with the diet. So diet and exercise is very important. So many studies indicate that lifestyle modification will reduce the amount of transfers and improve hepatitis steatosis. The basis management of the nephrology is that lifestyle modification and exercise. So this is very important. The loss of at least three to five percent of the body weight uh, that uh, uh, causes uh, uh, improvement in steatosis and greater weight loss more than ten percent and may need to improve the necroinflammation. So, if you want to improve the necroinflammation, you have to reduce the weight about more than ten percent. And who lost more than five percent of body weight improved the steatosis? Uh, more than nine percent weight loss had a significant improvement. Eh? Steatosis, lobular inflammation, ballooning, eh? and uh, nephrology uh, score. Seafirm, caring for well-being.